I would prefer not to. Herman Melville, Bartleby the Scribner, A Tale of Wall Street. Hello again. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his sexy squire. In the chapter's finale, Sancho tries to avoid the prophetic lashes. He objects to Dulcinea's tactic, her way of pleading for things, on two principal grounds. First, she dehumanizes him with insults like simple soul and untamed beast. Second, she does not offer to compensate him in any way. What basket of white linen does she place before me in order to win me over? Remember, a major theme of the novel, Sancho wants to be an employee, not a slave. Via a suggestive series of refrains, he underscores money instead of demands as the best way to get someone to work. That refrain which I've heard around here that an ass climbs a mountain faster when he's weighted down with gold, and that gifts destroy boulders, and that God helps those who help themselves. Next, he links Dulcinea's lack of compassion to his master's threats, clearly recalling the conflict between Andres and Juan Aldudo in chapter four of part one. For my lord and master says that if he catches hold of me, he'll tie me naked to a tree and double the total number of lashes. Finally, he makes all of this political. They're demanding not only that a squire lash himself, but a governor. And they come asking that I lash myself voluntarily, even though that's as foreign to me as becoming a tyrant. This last statement seems ironic because Sancho does indeed want to rule, but he is also highlighting that he does not want to govern like a despot. Did you know? Cervantes deploys proverbs throughout his literary works. Don Quixote himself defines these as brief maxims taken from the experience and speculation of our wise ancestors. Now the Duke and Duchess enter the argument. The Duke says Sancho will not govern unless he accepts the lashes. In resolution, Sancho, either you will be whipped, or they will whip you, or you will not be governor. The Duchess points out the squire's indebtedness to Don Quixote, and then uses her own refrain to appeal to the better part of his nature. A valiant heart destroys misfortune. At this point, Sancho makes one final technical objection by pointing out to Merlin that the devil, messenger, of the previous chapter had ordered them to await Montesinos, and so far we have seen neither Montesinos nor anyone like him. Merlin responds that devils lie and then insists that Sancho accept the lashes for the benefit of his soul as well as his body. For your soul, for the charity you will show her, for your body because I know you are of sanguine temperament and it cannot do you harm to lose a little blood. This reference to medieval medical theory implies the element of fire that was associated with the humor of blood. Thus, Sancho's penitence suggests the Inquisition, as if our squire were being burned like a heretic. All this nonsensical performance of nonsense anticipates the scientific materialism of men like Hobbes, who rejected the existence of the soul, and Harvey, who discovered the real purpose of blood. Quixotic mission. Like Sancho, which character from part one of the novel has to experience lashes? A. Andres. B. Sansón Carrasco. C. Tomé Cecial. Correct answer, A. Andres. Sancho's reaction is sarcastic. Even enchanters are doctors. In the end, Sancho agrees to perform the penance. His final speech has two interesting aspects. First, Sancho formulates his punishment as the means of making the world see that Dulcinea is indeed beautiful, so that the world can rejoice in the beauty of the lady Doña Dulcinea del Toboso, for it now appears, contrary to what I thought, that she is, in effect, beautiful. Second, he deploys contractual and commercial terms to make his lashes contingent on his own free will on the condition that I am to give them to myself only when and where I wish without any fixed time or date being placed on me, and I'll make sure to pay my debt as soon as possible. 
Sancho even specifies that Merlin must keep an accurate accounting of the lashes. Item, that if I err in the number, Sir Merlin, since he knows all, must be responsible for counting them. Chapter 35 concludes with music and a blast of infinite harquebuses. Everyone pays homage to Sancho, especially Don Quixote, giving him a thousand kisses on his forehead and cheeks. That's all for today. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss out. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.